Hey, I'm Joey Tedesco, and you're watching the Cartoon Palooza. Cut to the intro. Sorry about my attitude lately. It's just that I've been a little bummed out. Only because I see comments all the time posted on my YouTube and Blip channel about how I'm pissing over people's opinions for not liking something. Imagine that, people getting upset because I don't agree with them. Often I come across the show or movie that I either hate or love that people just can't stand. It's okay, it doesn't affect me if you like The Return of Jafar or Can't Stand Batman Brave and the Bold. Or even if you like the cat now. Yeah, there's something wrong with you if you like that movie, but I digress! The point of the matter is, is that if you like something, that's perfectly fine. I'm just here to share my opinion and crack some jokes. To prove to you that it's okay to like different things, I'm going to review two shows on this double feature extravaganza. On one show, I asked the question, why aren't enough people watching this show? And the other one, why? In short, this is to show you that my opinion isn't the law of the land. You can enjoy certain shows if it's value irregardless if it's a guilty pleasure or if there's actual substance people overlook. On the other side of the coin, it should make sense why there are shows you notice people going gaga over that you could care less about. In this case... This is the show that people have gone on record saying it is the worst thing ever put on Nickelodeon. And you know what? I like it so much that I use it for my intro. Fanboy and Chum Chum is the American cartoon that's still on the air, going into its second season. It's created by animator Eric Robles and stars two uber dorks that I could only describe as imagining the most caffeinated, attention deprived, wackiest, zaniest, cartooniest, nonsense viewing pair of kids possible. Imagine if you took two comic book dorks and pumped them with Ritalin, Adderall, and every imaginable energy drink on the market, and then took them to see the new Avengers movie. Those kids would seem normal, but still worth for the comparison. It's still comparable that these figurine-collecting, frosty-chugging, wide-eyed cartoon characters are worth mentioning. Now I know what you're thinking if you've only heard of this show. Joey, you're nuts. You're clearly off your rocker. What do you see in this show? Every time I want to tune into that show, all I can picture is that obnoxious theme song that the Tasmanian Devil could have wrote. <laughs> When you get that out of the way, the show does have some charm to it. It's a silly cartoon doing what silly cartoons used to do, like hitting each other on the head with mallets and having hearts appear over their heads when they're falling in love. Maybe it's because I'm sick and tired of cartoon characters standing around in banter. Talk! Because that's what animation's for, the medium where you can do anything imaginable. Have people talk around and tell boring jokes for a long period of time. I bet you'd want an anvil to fall on one of the characters from a Seth MacFarlane show just as much as I do. How you, uh, how you coming on that novel? Hell, Fanboy and Chum Chum act more like the Looney Tunes than the current Looney Tunes. Now that's telling you a lot. Most of the criticism for this show happens to come from people comparing it to Spongebob. Which, yeah, it does feel like a Spongebob clone at times. Let's check off all the comparisons I have now, shall we? We have a Paradox War Against the Grain. One of them is a brainless dope that acts on impulse, where the other one seems a little in line with the program. You got it set to M for many, when it should be set to W for Wumbo. There's a little to no continuity between each episode, which makes their lessons learn pointless and inevitable to repeat. Finally, there's a guy who can't stand their antics and gets caught in their schemes and is confused for the best friend. May I take your hat too? May I- Alright, I've heard enough. And, really? Those are all the comparisons I can come up with. Otherwise, I don't think it's a fair comparison to make since Spongebob really spawns from Rocco's modern life. You know what I'm talking about. The show with the Grey Wallaby getting caught in surreal adventures with his motley crew of zany friends. Anybody could draw a map of what animators from that show would spawn onto other shows like Chowder, Flapjack, and Adventure Time. So it doesn't really concern me if this has similar themes to those shows since originality these days is borrowing elements all over, putting it together, and praying that it's different. What sets Fanboy and Chum Chum apart from a lot of the other Nicktoons is how its emphasis is on geek culture. Its main fuel is geek culture and the generation that spawned from it. The over-caffeinated gamer, manga readers, and comic book lovers is what this show is proud of exposing. Each episode pays homage to films like Terminator and even Inception. Make sure to watch for the synchronized kicks or you'll end up in limbo. Ugh, this is so boring! Now how many cartoons make references to Inception? Not enough! It's not the best or anywhere as good as a Carl's Bank comic, but it's still pretty fun. There's an episode which directly parodies A Clockwork Orange, where the show's antagonist tries to curb his bullying behavior through operant conditioning. 
It goes beyond shock therapy and even includes him beating up kids with Beethoven's Ode to Joy going on in the background. Come on, that's awesome! And that's another point I want to bring up. It really sets this show apart when the kids don't actually have parents, since most of those parent relationships get in the way. Legitimately, Fanboy and Chum Chum are two kids living in a water tower Animaniac style, and just appear when necessary. So, I can't really find a lot to complain about this show. It's a silly cartoon that knows it's loud and over the top, and it practically revels in it. So I can't really hate it for that. I wouldn't even say it's a guilty pleasure, since a lot of critics feel the same way. It's been nominated and even won a handful of Emmys, so it must have a viewership like myself tuning in for another episode. I think the negative criticism does come from the fact that it relies on pop culture and most people are looking for a classic cartoon. For those people who haven't watched it and can't relate, then that's fine. However, for people that won't even bother checking it out, just saying, you might be missing out. 